Welcome. My name is Stan Hanslick. I serve as pastor of the Assembly of God Church in Springville, New York. Today is Easter Sunday, April 12th, 2020. You've come to a loving church, a wonderful family of believers, and thank you for joining us today. If you have children, I hope you'll take some time to uh, check out our Facebook page, our church Facebook page, Springville Assembly of God, or my personal Facebook page, Stan Hanslick, and we have some a special children's presentations there that'll be an encouragement for your kids. It'll be fun, but also it'll be something that you can use to encourage them in their walk in faith in Jesus Christ. May I encourage you to share this video, share it on Facebook, or that's probably where you're watching it, and, and let your friends also see the good news of Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday. And then check out our website video page. There you'll find all kinds of neat things happening at church, but especially great ministries for children. And I hope that once this um, in-place stuff is done, we'll have an opportunity to meet in person at uh, the Assembly of God Church in Springville. But in the meantime, feel free to contact us with a phone call or uh, an email or whatever. And if you'd like somebody to pray with you, to encourage you, to be there for you, uh, we're as close as a phone call. So we encourage you to do that. Now, in just a few minutes, we're going to share communion on this Easter Sunday morning, or maybe you're watching this in the afternoon. And so if you've not yet done so, if you didn't know about this, I'd ask you to uh, pause the video at some point and prepare uh, some juice, if you have grape juice, or if not, if you have apple juice, that would be fine, and, and also some bread, so that a little later we'll be able to share communion together as believers who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Now today, our families and individuals will be remembering and celebrating Easter at home. We don't have much of a choice, do we? We'll consider the importance of being at home, of the family meal, and of what the meal meant in the fulfillment of Easter. Our current shelter-in-place regulations seem like a difficult thing, and they are, but they will also remind us, they'll be kind of an illustrated sermon that I believe will be of a benefit to all of us in our adventure and our walk with Jesus Christ. So we're going to look to the scripture first with what is captioned the resurrection from Luke chapter 24. Verse 1 says, Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. And they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, and so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. And then the men asked them, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is clearly tied to the Jewish festival celebration of Passover, a celebration which remembered God's deliverance of Israel from slavery and into freedom, which they had longed for. We'll see that Jesus didn't come just to be with us, but he came to die for us, defeating death so that we too may be raised from the dead and live with him for all of eternity. And we'll see that there are three biblical meals mentioned in the Bible that are a part of and speak to the purpose of his coming and what we celebrate as Easter. One meal is an announcement of his coming. One meal is a fulfillment of the purpose of his coming. And one meal is the proof that he did what he came to do. This first one we're going to call the announcement meal. It's found in Exodus chapter 12. And this was when the judgment of God was going to come upon all the Egyptians in that they would not allow God's people, Israel, to be free from slavery. And it was the last of the horrible plagues that God brought upon the Egyptians. And in Exodus chapter 12, 13, it says, But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. 
When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. The Passover in Egypt found the families of Israel sheltered in place in their personal homes, much like you are sheltered in place in your home today. And Passover provides for us the first revelation of the importance of a lamb and the importance of the blood of a lamb as a protector from death. It's an announcement. It's a forerunner. It's a prophecy of the coming of the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of all who trust in him. By faith in Jesus, eternal death would pass over our lives as we are sheltered under the blood that he shed. And it shows us that the best way to pass this truth from generation to generation is through the family, even through the table where family meets and eats and celebrates life. And of course, the Jews did this hundreds of times with great detail and celebration being re- a repetition that would would teach their children to embrace the freedom that came through the protection and deliverance of God. So we can be sure that when John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he knew what he was talking about. He knew of the Passover. He knew of the blood of the Lamb. And you and I have a responsibility as family, as fathers and mothers, and maybe even as grandparents to exemplify, to teach, and to empower our children to receive this good news message of Jesus Christ. Parents provide the home and the covering and the atmosphere and the example so that children will be equipped to receive the gift of salvation when they are ready to do so. Now, the second meal we're going to call the fulfillment meal. The second meal was a celebration of the original Passover, and it was being done, of course the Jews did it every, every year as a celebration, but this particular one was being done by Jesus and his disciples who were still obeying the command of God to reenact the original Passover meal. They were told to, to keep doing this and, and that they would never forget what God had done and to continue to look forward to what he would do. And during the celebration, this is what happened. We read from Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them and he said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And Jesus said, mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. This Passover celebration took place in an upper room in Jerusalem. It, of course, highlighted the apostles, his disciples, who are and were the early representatives of the emerging church, the family of God, the believers, you and I, the children of God. And it is there that Jesus revealed to them and to us that he was the lamb who would supply the blood of cleansing and protection. And that he would be the unleavened bread, the sinless bread for the food of eternal and abundant life. Now, the third meal I'd like to share with you this morning and talk about is the resurrection meal. This meal happened after the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Two disciples were traveling along a road to Emmaus, and Jesus came and talked with them. they talked with them they did not even recognize him but they invited him to stay with them for the evening and they shared a meal with him at which Jesus uh, revealed himself as the glorified Christ and the victor over sin and death and we read in Luke chapter 24 verse 30 that as they sat down to eat 
He took the bread and blessed it, and then he broke it and he gave it to them. Verse 31 says, suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us along the road and explained the scriptures to us? See, Jesus is now alive. He is, he's alive. He's resurrected from the dead. He talked with them. He could be seen and touched, and he even sat and ate a meal with them. And then he just disappeared. He is now glorified. He was no longer bound by these earthly bodies or by the things of earth. It seems as if he could move between heaven and earth uh, now in his resurrected form. And let's talk for a minute about the importance of these meals. From the beginning, God chose meals human hunger, and eating as special opportunities for revelation and communication. Eating is an obvious and required function for life, right? If we don't eat, we die. We have to eat. It sustains us. It prolongs our life. It gives strength to the one who's eating. It adds joy and pleasure to our lives. It's a time of gathering. It's a place for family. It's a community, the community of the church. We share, we talk, we laugh, we exchange life around meals. And these are important to the Lord. And he's given us this beautiful privilege. I I think about how seldom people even eat meals together at home. Now, Probably now that's changing. In fact, one of the benefits perhaps of this time of sheltering in place is that we can eat a meal together. We can talk at the dinner table and we can have a time to grow and listen and share and understand. In the beginning, in the beginning, even in the Garden of Eden, there were provisions that the Lord made to provide for man even before he formed man from the dust. God created fruit-bearing plants in the garden so that man would have food to eat upon his arrival. God prepared man's food before he even made Adam in his own image. In the same way, Jesus' crucifixion and death on a cross was planned even before the world was created or man had sinned. God planned it this way, the meal was important. 1 Peter chapter 1 and 18 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid for with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. Verse 19 says, It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as a ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. So it is no wonder that the Passover, its fulfillment in Christ, and the proof of his resurrection and glorification all happened around a meal. It is no surprise that Jesus declared that he was the bread of life. In other words, he was to be considered the meal that produced eternal life. Now, this is symbolic. Jesus is the bread, the manna, the safe gathering place, the strength and life that is meant to be enjoyed and consumed. The New Testament communion that replaced the Passover meal for the church is a symbol of what Jesus was teaching us to do and to receive by faith. In 1 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul heard from the Lord Jesus. It said, the Lord, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it and he broke it into pieces and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. the mind.
mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shed Once again, Jesus touched the lives of his disciples. 
your life, your home, and your family. A beautiful Easter resurrection celebration. Well, Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because of what he has done, his death and resurrection, that death ultimately will pass over us and that we will be with you forever and ever with joy and life. And Lord, that even in these days, Jesus, you've said you've come not only that we would have eternal life, but we would have abundant life even now. And Lord, for that, we give you thanks and ask for that, Lord, for each one listening to this message, sharing the communion, and opening their heart to the powerful Word of God and the living Savior this day. In His name we pray. Amen. And Adam and Melissa, do a closing song for us now. Thanks. We introduced this song on Good Friday um, on our Zoom meeting for everybody that was there. and It spoke volumes to Melissa and I, and I just pray that it speaks to you too. This is The Stand. You stood before creation
what can I say? And what can I do? Offer this heart.